Hey, Brad, how are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. So it's been obviously a busy month for City Kickboxing. Is there more or less anxiety being one of the last ones to go out there and fight after seeing a bunch of your friends already go first? Uh, there's none. It's just exactly the same as, as it was before. Like, we all um, really enjoy competing and fighting. The fact that we get to all fight pretty close together and then relax uh, after the fight together, I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. We're lucky like that. Last year, you know, Arasanya and yourself did quite a lot of traveling. Obviously, a ton of quarantine that comes along with that. What are your cheat codes by now for all that time stuck in the hotel? What are those things that really get you through it when you've just been there a really long time already? Uh, PlayStation, a lot of Call of Duty, uh, a lot of reading, and a lot of self-reflection, man. Like, whether you win or whether you lose, there's a lot of time to... Uh, think about uh, how the fight went and stuff like that or your trip and other stuff in life so yeah quarantine's uh not it's not great but um you can definitely uh make it beneficial if you um if you try you can make it really bad or you can make it um you know, you make it a little bit better uh what's your gamer tag and playstation or xbox for people who want to you know shoot people oh, with uh, you online yeah but for call of duty it's one uh quite 55 yeah i'm okay I wouldn't rate myself too high, but I'm okay. <laughs> well, hopefully we get some people who can help you out. <laughs> I'm talking about the fight, you know, did you take much from Gregor's fight with Kevin Lee, or do you feel just you're a completely different fighter, so you'll approach it differently? Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, like, obviously, um, you exposed him a little bit, um, but sure that hasn't affected Gregor too much, to be honest. Uh, Kevin caught him with uh, two beautiful shots, just like Gregor said himself. Um, it was quite early on in the fight, so yeah, I'm a completely different fighter to Kevin. So yeah, the same result would be great, but uh, we we'll have to see how it goes. My final question: Just what do you want to show most for yourself in your performance on Saturday? Uh, that I can hang with a really, really high-level wrestler. That I can hang with the All-American wrestler, and uh, from from there on up, it'll be a uh, there will be a lot of worry for the other top thing. Hey, thank you, Brad. Good luck. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Your line is open. Hey, Brad. Uh, coming into this fight, you know, so much is being made about the, the, the contrast in styles you're striking against his wrestling. Uh, but do you think maybe we're making too much of that considering, you know, this is mixed martial arts? and Because you do see some guys and, and some girls you get overly, you know, they get overly, uh, you know, taken over by, you know, oh, he's going to try to wrestle me or, oh, they're going to try to strike with yeah. me. And it kind of takes them out of their game. Do you just have to kind of put all that out of your head? Yeah, man, 100%. Like, you can, obviously, uh, his wrestling is great, but you cannot just focus on that. You have to focus on your own thing. Otherwise, the fight's going to go his way. So, um, yeah, I do agree with you on that. People do get caught up on that. Uh, I'm not one of them. Like, obviously, in my other fights, I've just fought my fought my fight and you know sometimes i've been taken down and i got back up and carried on doing my thing so yeah i i'm just gonna do my thing out there you can't get in gregor's head but you know we've seen it a million times when you go through a really tough knockout like that you know it can change you it can really change you in your approach to fighting mentally yeah. wise your first time and this is going to be the first time he's going to get hit since then uh, we look for those kind of tendencies in that opening round if you tag him the first time and you kind of look in his eyes and see that because we have seen that a lot of times where you just, you, some people are just never the same after a knockout like that. Yeah, 100%. Like, uh, I'm definitely going to look for a bit of PTSD and see if it's still there. It could be, it, it couldn't be. Uh, like I've said a few times this week that um, knockouts like that are beneficial or detrimental, um, especially your first loss. You can, it can bring you back uh, better or uh, you can never come back at all. So I'll definitely be looking to see how he reacts to me when we jump in there and, and touch gloves and get going. There's obviously no shame in losing to Kevin Lee, who is a, you know incredible fighter in his own right. But you know, going into that fight, so much attention was on Gregor's undefeated, kind of the next big thing. But do you feel like you do still get you know a pretty quality win here over a guy who you know still has a lot of hype behind him? You know, obviously again, no shame in losing to Kevin Lee, but. Uh, do you feel like this does move you forward in terms of where you want to be in this division? Of course it does. Of course it does. Gregor's still an amazing fighter. He's still uh, 
you know, very decorated on what he's done. And you say there's uh, like no shame in losing to Kevin Lee. I don't think there's any shame in losing in the UFC. You know, we're a very small percentile of the population that get in there and fight. Uh, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of balls to step in there and, and, and fight someone. You know, you're stripping yourself down naked in front of the world um, and, and putting everything out there. So I don't think there's any shame in losing at all. I think you should be, be very proud that you step in there and, and go to war against somebody else. So, yeah. For the people that give people shit when they lose, man. Yeah. I'm not going to say what I think of them. Yeah, understandable. Uh, with that being said, you know, you have engaged in some battles, you know, in the UFC. You've been in those wars. Uh, do you feel like that is an advantage for you in this fight? You know, obviously, before the Kevin Lee fight, you know, Gregor had been pretty dominant. You know, he'd been kind of, I won't say running through guys. That's an insult to his opponents. But he'd been pretty dominant in his performances. Do you kind of look to test him to see, you know, if he can go in those deep waters? If you don't, you know, let's say knock him out early. Do you want to see if he can go in those deep waters with you? I'm sure, I'm sure he can go to those deep waters with me. Um, judging by his other opponents, like, he just, he dragged them too deep for themselves. Like, maybe they didn't prepare for him or they underestimated his uh, wrestling, but I've never underestimated any opponent that I've fought. I've had so many fights now in my life that you just can't do that. I've done it a couple of times earlier in my career and lost some important fights, and from then on, I've just never done it. And I think, yeah, it's, it's obviously beneficial for me that I've been the distance quite a few times with some really hard fighters that were gritty. Uh, so... Yeah, I think that works in my um, favor to fight someone like Gregor. Last one for me. I remember talking to Dan Hooker before his fight uh, earlier this year and the kind of crazy quarantine he had to go through going home uh, just because, you know, the restrictions are a little tighter uh, in New Zealand and Australia and obviously uh, what we're doing here in America. I'm curious, uh, what do you have to go through when you finally get a chance to go home? Yeah, Dan, Dan's was a bit savage. You know, I really felt for him because of his family and stuff. Um and it's always a little bit harder to bear with, with the loss, but he bounced back really well. He was positive. And we talked to him uh, during that time, and um, mine is not as bad as that. Mine's, I think, five weeks total, so I leave on the 3rd of April. Well, I leave America on the 1st of April, and I've got like a ugh, like a 40-odd-hour flight home, a couple of transits, um, so mine's not too bad. I'm here for Volcon stuff that extended a little bit, but uh, I would have done that anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. We'll go, we'll go next to Pablo Santa Maria with No T MMA Ecuador. Your line is open. Hi, Brian. Can you hear me? Yep. Gotcha. Okay. The first thing I want to ask you is, what are your thoughts of Gregor as an opponent? Oh, he's a worthy opponent. You know, he's uh, it's a difficult fight. Um, you know, he he's good. Yeah, everyone knows he wrestles, but uh, he also doesn't mind to stand there and throw some punches like. Uh, that's to my benefit, I think. But uh, he, he's a gamer. He's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I'm looking forward to fighting him. That's why I said I'll do it. Okay, for sure. Uh, this is your fourth fight in the UFC, and every time you get on the octagon, you get better opponents. So if you get the victory over Gregor, do you have someone in your mind to call? Uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Um, I'm gonna deal with Gregor this weekend. I'm gonna focus on that fight. Get tunnel vision on that. And then, you know, I do have plans after, but they're far, far, far in the back of my mind. And uh, I'll bring them to uh, fruition after that fight. For sure. Uh, City Kickboxing is known for the elite takedown defense they have. And do you think that will be an important key to get the victory? Of course. Of course. Like, every, every time Gregor gets me down, that's, you know, that's time to his advantage. So I definitely don't want to get taken down. Could happen. It couldn't happen. Uh, fights a fight and things tend to change in there at the last uh, split second. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident in my takedown defense and I'm more confident in my ability to get up and I'm most confident in my ability not to give up. So, yeah. Okay, and the last question for me is, it's what's your prediction for the fight? Well, I'm going to win. <laughs> That's always my prediction for the fight. I'm gonna <laughs> win. How I win, I will have to wait until the end of it. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to win. Okay, thank you very much, Brad, for your time and good luck on the fight. Thank you. We'll go next to Ryan McCarthy with Low Kick MMA. Your line is open. Hey, Brad. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good, good. Just a couple questions here. You're 3-0 um, you're in, in the UFC, six straight wins overall. Uh, what would be next for you if you, um, you know, when you get a dub over, you know, ranked opponent Gregor Gillespie here? Is, uh, are you trying to um, go into the top 10 for an opponent? Is there a certain name that you're looking out for here in the lightweight division? 
Uh, there's not a sort of name yet. You know, you've always got to wait for uh, other fights to play out to, to see what the uh, best um, you know, pick is um, for me. But I fully believe I deserve someone close to the top 10 um, after you're going through Gregor. Uh, top 10 or close to. Yeah, for sure. And do you, since you're in the lightweight division, do you have a prediction of uh, what the next um, lightweight title fight will be? There's obviously a lot of... Uh, a lot of names out there that are, um, you know, vying for that shot, so. Well, personally, I think Dustin and Charles Oliveira um, fighting for that belt. Those guys have uh, are in their spot. Sure. And uh, is there a certain um, cheat meal you get after after a W over Gregor on Saturday? <laughs> yeah, man, I always like, I like smoking meat. I like eating barbecue and stuff like that. I'm a, I'm a big meat eater, so that's what I'll be hunting for over here. America's got pretty good barbecue. Let's see what... Uh, See what Vegas has. Nice, man. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Best of luck on Saturday. We'll go next to Nikita with Sport Express. Your line is open. Brett, big pleasure to talk to you. What's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm very good, thank you. Brett, Israel Adesanya once said that you are one of the toughest and bravest person he's ever met in his life. Do you remember your first meet with Israel and your first impression of him? My, f my first meet, my first impression of Israel. Yes. Jeez, uh, I think the first time I met Izzy would have been oh, coming on like nine, eight or nine years ago, eight years. He used to, uh, we were at different gyms and uh, a couple of times a week or sometimes uh, Eugene would bring uh, him and a couple of other guys up to spar at our gym um, in a different part of the city because our gym was uh, quite known for like quite hard sparring and uh, we probably sparred a little bit too hard back then. And Izzy would come up and, and spar us. And it was the same thing back then. Like, he was hard to hit, you know, at distance. And then, so I used to get in close and get him in the pocket. That's where I'd have the most success. And then I spent so much time doing that. He got good at doing that. And then, obviously, from there on, he got good at doing everything. That was my, uh, that was my first time meeting him. And... Same same thing then as now, man. It's it was hard to fight him, and he's always been a good a good dude. You know, he's got heaps of energy. He's real fun. Yeah, I've always said uh, good things for Israel. Uh, Brett, uh, now we see more and more knockouts against wrestlers in MMA with flying knees, with knees, and you're a Muay Thai kickboxing guy. How much do you love knee, and how you make stake on this type of strike against such short wrestler like uh, Gregor? Oh, it's a, it's a huge benefit. I mean, like, if if no one's throwing their legs up or their knees up or something like that, it's it's very inviting to just go and shoot. But uh, when someone sticks their knee up, you know, it changes your mind pretty quick because, you know, if your head meets the knee, everyone knows what, which one's going to win. So it's a huge part of uh, fighting a high-level wrestler. Brad, thank you very much. Good luck. Pleasure. Thank you. We will take our final questions from Omer Mert with Escort. Your line is open. Hello, Brett. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Thank you, sir. Uh, Brett, there are a lot of important names coming out New Zealand. What did your country do right and suddenly such MMA stars starts to appear? Can I get some advice for my country? Um, I think... I don't know. It's just, I guess it's, um, <laughs> we're just very stubborn. Like, we're a very small country, and we weren't very noticed um, before this. We had we had so many amazing fighters in our past that found, probably found it difficult, and unfortunately, they didn't get to, to get onto the world stage just because of our location in the world. It was hard to get out, and it's not, it's not anything that we're doing lately. It's just the stuff that we've always done, and we're very lucky that Dan Hooker and uh, Israel have, like, elevated our our platform in the UFC and now we have a lot of exposure so and Mark Hunt you know as well like those guys got us noticed and now it's easier for us to get into the UFC so it's not what we're doing now it's what we've always been doing and we're just yeah we owe those guys a lot okay thank you my other question do you have a dream match in the UFC do I sorry what do you have a dream match in the UFC any legends or current name dream match um oh 
I think, I, you know, I, I would really like to experience, like, fighting uh, Khabib. Obviously, he's finished, but just watching that guy over his whole career, like, he was such a dominant force, and it didn't matter who he got in the, in the cage with, you just saw him crush them and just fold them. And I think it would be a, a crazy experience to, to fight him and feel that strength and feel that, that you know, that, that power and... You know, then you can go away and <laughs> really think about what you have to work on and, and appreciate how long he's how long he's been working on that skill set. So that would be cool. That would be uh, just more for um, yeah experience. Okay, my last question, uh, Brad. What do you think other thing as last performance? Did you ever ever chance to talk after the fight? I haven't talked to him about the fight. We've just talked. I think. Uh, <laughs> I told him that somebody, he's doing quarantine in my home city, so I told him somebody wants to drop him off some barbecue. And my mom dropped him off heaps of muffins, so I think that's about as much as I've said to him. But um, uh, I, th I thought his performance was great, you know. I think he's he's daring to do something that a lot of people uh, haven't done and will probably never do, like going up to fight a man that big, you know. Israel's a very tall middleweight, but he's not an enormous one, like he's not hugely heavy and stuff so for him to go and fight a man that big and, and risk his record and you know dare to be great it's awesome you know when I lose I'm like insanely proud of that guy and what he did and uh he's gonna come back and do do just as just as many phenomenal things as he's done in the past and yeah don't don't sleep on Israel there's some there's some big things coming for that guy still okay Rhett good luck thank you thank you